this chapter, we're going to study angles and reasoning. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at parallel lines and transversals. Okay, everybody. Now, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at parallel lines. Okay, and to start off with, just a little bit of vocabulary here. So we've got a set of parallel lines, and remember that they these are lines in a plane that do not intersect, okay, at, at no point. So when two lines run parallel to each other, and we usually use the little like arrow markers on there, sometimes you'll see them, um, you'll see people put little little triangles on them to indicate that they're that they're parallel to each other. But anyway, you'll have these little marks here, and what that means is no matter how far you go along those lines, they will never intersect. Now, when you draw a line that crosses both of them, we call that line a transversal, okay? And what that transversal does is it creates a set of angles here, okay? We've got an angle here, we've got an angle here, 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 here. There's all these angles. Now, in spite of how I've drawn that right now, they are not all the same. What we want to do now is take a look at the relationships uh, between those angles that are formed by the transversal and the parallel lines. Okay, so the first set of angles that we want to look at are what we call corresponding angles. So here's our two, our two parallel lines, okay, and our transversal goes through it. Now, what happens here is you've got these, these set of four, uh, four angles here. Uh, you might even, if I just tilt this a little bit, actually I'll do it like, does that, I don't know, does that work? I'll do it like that, I'll do it like that. So what I've sort of got here if you want to think of it this way, is when that transversal cuts it, I've got this north, south, west, east sort of a scenario here. And then I've got a north, south, west, east here with this set of angles as well. Corresponding angles are angles that are in the same basic direction as each other based on the vertex. So for example, what we're trying to identify here is E and E, east and east here. They're both pointing the same direction relative to the point of intersection of the, uh, the transversal and the parallel lines. So those two angles would be the same. The two north angles would be the same. The two west angles would be the same. So would the south angles, okay? I, I hope that makes sense, but that's what we mean by corresponding. They're in the same kind of relative uh, position to the other angles uh, in both the different uh, scenarios here, the points of intersection, okay? So anyway, that's all we're getting at here. So angle A and angle A here, those two angles, they're identical in terms of their size. So now let's use that to, um, to mark off some angles here. Okay, so this question here says, on the diagram below, mark three uh, other pairs of corresponding angles and mark them off as X, Y, and Z, okay? So I've already kind of indicated what's going on here. They have already told us that these angles here are corresponding. Okay, and they, in the example up above here, or the illustration up above, they named those both A. So now we're supposed to find three other pairs. Well, here we go. This, if we call this one X right here, it's right above the A, so down here the angle right above the A would also be X. Y is vertically opposite to A, so the angle down here, vertically opposite to A, would also be equal to Y. And then over here, this angle we might call this one Z, okay, it's supplementary to A, I mean they're both on this same parallel line, well so is this one down here. So they're, they're in the same relative location to A in both those sets of angles. In this example, we're being told to use straight angles and corresponding angles to calculate uh, the angles that we are looking for here. So in this case, A and B. Well, I know right away okay, that A and 120 are corresponding. When I look at the vertex here, okay, I go up. In this case, I bump into the 120. In this case, it's A. So I know that angle A must be 120 degrees. Then I know that A and B must be 180 degrees because they're both on a straight line. So B must equal 180 degrees minus 120 degrees, okay, because I'm going to subtract A. A is 120, just figured that out. That gives me 
60 degrees. B is 60. Ooh, now there's a lot going on here, but notice my parallel lines. And in fact, it sometimes helps just to extend this. Okay, don't, don't hesitate to extend those lines if they help you see things here. And then I've got this is a transversal and this is a transversal. And it's a little bit clearer to see now. Okay, so now, now bear in mind, the angles are formed by the transversal and the parallel lines. These are two different transversals, so these are two different sets of angles here. So let's take a look at this one. Here's my, my vertex. If I go kind of down this way, I get 124. So when I'm here at this vertex and go down this way, angle C should be 124 degrees. Now D is going to be, these two are going to add up to 180, so it's going to be 180 degrees minus 24 degrees. So that's going to be, whoops, I was going to say 57, but that's not, it's going to be 56. Oops. 56 degrees. Over here, by the same token, if I sit on this vertex and kind of drop, uh, draw down through the 132, over here, if I draw down, I'm going through angle E. So angle E must be 132 degrees. They're going to be identical. And then F, because E and F together form 180, it's going to be 180 degrees minus 132 degrees. Okay. This should have been, sorry, I wrote 24 here. I just looked back at my own work and realized I got the answer right, but I wrote this down wrong, and someone's probably oops, getting all frustrated with me. That's 180 minus 124, not 24. That's 180 minus 132. That is going to be 48 degrees. Whew. Okay, good. Got it. Okay, another set of angles that we can find when we've got a parallel lines and a transversal are alternate interior angles. Uh, and this is the Z shape uh, in the diagram to the right. So if we extend our lines here to create the, the parallel lines and then draw that transversal a little longer here, you see the original diagram, but if you get a, cut out that little extras here that we put in, we got this little Z shape here. These two angles here are going to be equal to each other, okay? They're going to be equal. Now, I can explain why, okay? Uh, and this is basically what, what this little bit is doing down here. Notice that as soon as I extended my lines here, I create vertically opposite angles. So I know that this angle down here is 50 degrees, which is what they're trying to explain here. And then, based on the rule that I just learned, I know that those two angles must also be the same because they're corresponding to each other. So then we can just jump to the conclusion that when we've got this shape right here, the two angles kind of on the interior of this are going to be equal to each other. Now, that being said, that being said, these two angles here are also equal to each other by exactly the same rule, okay? So it's not just these pairs, but it's this, uh, sorry, this pair of angles, it's this pair of angles as well that are going to be identical to each other. They won't be the same as, as the ones we were just working with. They'll be different. And in fact, I can figure out what they are because if this is 50, I know that these two angles have to add up to 180, which will make this 130. And then I'll know that this is 130 degrees as well. Okay? So, and that's what you're seeing down here. So the different ways that you can get these alternate interior angles. And then notice here that this is, this is kind of what you're seeing with what I was demonstrating uh, just a couple seconds ago. If you were to extend this line right here, oh, and I could have done that better these two angles would also be equal to one another. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at some questions. Okay, so the question says, use alternate angles and straight lines to calculate the marked angles. Okay, let's zoom in. So here we go. So the two, the two parallel lines we have are this line right here, and I'm gonna extend this one so it's a little bit clearer. And then I'm gonna extend my transversals a little bit. Oh, I could have done that a little bit better. Just so that the relationships are maybe a little bit clearer. Now, I see my Z shape right here. Okay, angle B must be equal to 69 degrees. Okay, because they are alternate interior angles. Now, 
in addition to that, the it's kind of backwards over here, but the same rule, angle A and 47 are kind of on the alternate sides inside between those uh, parallel lines here. So I know that A must be equal to 47 degrees. Okay? And now I know that B, C, A, they're forming a straight line. So I know that B plus C plus A has to be 180 degrees. So 69 degrees plus C plus 47 degrees is equal to 180. And so what I'll do is I will just subtract these two angles from 180. So when I add those together, what have I got here? So 69 and 47, uh, so 7 is going to be 6, so this is going to be 180 degrees minus, when I add those two together, that's going to be 6, so 116 degrees. And so all together that will be 64 degrees. Angle C must be 64. Now I just want to double check that I got that right there. <clears throat> yeah, looks good. Okay, let's go over here. In this diagram, uh, my two parallel lines are these two right here because of the arrows that I'm seeing. Okay, now right off the bat here, notice that I'm, t I'm telling you that these are the same side, uh, same length here. So this is an isosceles triangle, so this angle right here and this one are going to be the same. Okay, so we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, if this is 42 degrees and these are my parallel lines, that means D must be 42 degrees. Those, that's because of the alternate interior angles. Okay, so right here, D is 42 degrees. Now, I also know that... Ah, okay, there's a couple ways I could do this here. Okay, okay, well, I'm going to do it like this. I know that these two angles here are going to be the same. So, to get E, what I'm going to do here, and I don't know this is this is E degrees as well, I know that 42 degrees plus two E's is going to equal 180 degrees. Okay? So, two E's is going to be equal 180 minus 42, which will be 138 degrees. And when you divide that by two, okay, when you divide that by two, what are we going to get here? We're going to get uh, 69 degrees. Okay, so E is going to be 69 degrees here. Now, I know that E plus D plus F must equal 180 degrees. Okay, because this all that straight line right there all together. So it's going to be 69 degrees plus 42 degrees plus F is equal to 180. Uh, putting those together, what are we going to get here? We're going to get, uh, looks like 111 degrees plus F is equal to 180 degrees. Oops. So F is going to equal well, 180 minus uh, 111, which uh, should be, uh, what is that, S again, 69 degrees again? I'm just going to double check that. So if I add those together, what, yep, so 69 degrees. And there you go. Okay, now we're going to look at what we call co-interior angles. So here's our parallel lines. Okay, put little arrows through there. Same thing here. Okay, parallel lines. So the C in each diagram, the shape that you're seeing there, are made up of two parallel lines and the transversal. We just extend that, extend that over here, extend that. There's my transversal, but you're seeing the shape that's kind of dark there. The angles that are on the inside, okay, uh, we're gonna, and they're each marked here, O and X here, um, those are co-interior angles. And now take a look at them. You should notice here that it's they're not they're not equal to each other. I mean they're clearly not equal. This is a this is an obtuse angle, this is an acute angle. Okay. But what can we say about those those angles here? Well, think about it right now. Before I even like before I give you the rule, let's just think about this for a second here. I know because of the rule about corresponding angles that this angle right here is the same as this one. So this angle here must be X. So these are the same here. So what's the relationship between these two angles? Well, they're along a straight line. So these are supplementary. 
okay? These are supplementary. So if when I move this angle or I identify that this angle and this one are the same, and I know that these two are supplementary, well then it means that these two angles on the interior here are also supplementary. So what we're seeing here is that O, in every case here, O plus X is equal to 180 degrees. So the sum of co-interior angles must be 180 degrees. They are supplementary to each other. Okay, so in this question right here, let's use what we just figured out here. It says calculate the measure of the three remaining angles in the parallelogram. Now, it's a parallelogram, so bear in mind that I'm going to, I should be able to extend these lines here. Those two lines are parallel, and these two lines are parallel. Okay, so now we see right here that this angle here is 48 degrees. If this is 48 degrees and these two lines are parallel, then I know that this angle up here uh, must be 132 degrees. Okay, because these two angles have to add up to 180. Now, let's just yoink, rotate our thinking a little bit here. I know that these two lines here are parallel. And here's my transversal. So I know that these two angles here must also add up to 180 degrees. And if this is 132, that means this angle right here must be 48 degrees. Okay? Rotate it back. I know because these two angles here, oh, sorry, angles, not angles, these two uh, lines here are parallel, and this is my transversal, I know that these two angles must be supplementary, which means that this angle here must also be 132 degrees, okay? And so that's how you, you do this here. We've got two sets of parallel lines, and I just pretend that in this case, for these two lines right here, parallel lines, this is the first transversal I'm gonna look at. When I rotate it, these two, sorry, these two become the parallel lines, and then this becomes the transversal. And I can walk around the whole uh, diagram just by doing that. So in summary, what have, we, what have we looked at here? Well, when we've got parallel lines intersected by a transversal, we know that corresponding angles are equal, alternate interior angles are equal, and co-interior angles are supplementary, okay? And you're gonna have to, if you don't already, you're gonna have to memorize what's meant, okay, by corresponding, alternate, and co-interior, okay? And then finally here, if a transversal intersects two lines and the corresponding angles are equal, the alternate angles are equal, the co-interior angles are supplementary, and then the two lines are parallel. So basically what we're saying is this relationship can go in both directions here. So if you know that two lines are parallel and you've got a transversal, then these are true. But if you can see a transversal intersecting two lines and you can verify that these angles share this relationship, well then you also know that those two lines must be parallel.